Hi there, today we're learning about reading input from a file. So, uh, so far we've uh, learned about using the print writer class to create a file and uh, open a connection to a file. We've learned about the uh, file writer class to append data to a file, but we have not yet uh, learned how to grab information from a file, to read input from a file. So, uh, this, that's what uh, today's lesson is about. So today uh, we're going to learn about the file class. File class has a very unique method called the hasNext um, uh, method, which allows us uh, to, to see whether or not we've reached the end of a file. And we are also going to use the scanner class. Um, and we're going to use the next line method, which you've used before. Uh, so to give you a brief overview of how to read input from a file, uh, it's fairly simple. The first thing that we need to do is create two objects. We're going to create a uh, file object called file. And uh, this is what accesses uh, or opens a connection to a file that's currently out there. For example, let's say we wanted to read information from a file called crow.txt. Uh, we would uh, use the following statement to open a connection to that file. So now I've got this file object that has a connection open to crow.txt. I then am going to create a scanner object called input file. And then I, uh, access, I can access this file object using the following statement right here. So you are probably used to seeing um, uh, the following statement, scanner dot space keyboard dot new scanner uh, system dot uh, in. Uh, and that is if we wanted to uh, create an object that would read information from a command prompt. This is a scanner object that's going to read information from a file. So after we create these two objects, the first thing that we can do is we can use this scanner object input file. We can use this method right here, this next line method. I mean, you're used to saying keyboard dot next line to grab information from the command prompt and put it into a variable. Well, we can do that from a file. We're just going to say input file dot next line to grab that information from the file and then put it into str line, put it into a variable, and then we can actually display that um, whatever was grabbed from the file, we can display that to uh, the user using the following statement that we usually use, system.outprintline str line. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's uh, look at the demonstration here. First thing I want to do is I want to back up and I want to talk about uh, you know the uh, default um, uh, project folder. So notice right here I've got this project folder. Um, it is called uh, Java programs and in here I've got you know a few folders one's called SRC for source and this is where I've got just a bunch of class files this right here is the uh, class file that we're going to be using today 31 flavors demo um, the reason that I'm bringing up this directory right here this folder right here is because this is the default location uh, where NetBeans will create files and um, where NetBeans will grab files uh, if there's no uh, directory uh, specified. So in here I've got two uh, files. One's called uh, 31flavors.txt, another's called 31numbers. If I go into 31flavors, you can see we've got 31 flavors of ice cream in here. And 31numbers just has 31 numbers um, inside this file. So let's go ahead and let's look at the, uh, the, the code here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, import the scanner class. I'm going to import the input output uh, package, uh, all, all the classes within that package. Uh, in my main method header, I'm going to use the throws IO exception clause, because uh, we usually want to do that whenever we're uh, reading input from a file or writing input to a file. I then declare a few variables, int choice, um, str file name, str line, dbl number, and then I create a keyboard uh, a scanner, <coughs> excuse me, a scanner object called keyboard, so I can grab object, uh, you know, information from the uh, command prompt. I then tell the user, I say, hey, enter one to see one flavor from 31 flavors, enter two to see 31 flavors from 31 flavors.txt, or enter three to see 31 numbers from 31 numbers.txt. Enter selection here. So I'm going to go ahead and run the program, and we're going to go through each one of these, and then we're going to look at the code and see what each does. So enter one to see one flavor from 31 flavors. TXT. So I'm going to type 1, and it's going to ask me for the file. I'm just going to type the file here, 05931flavors.txt, and the first line in the file is vanilla. And this is true, because if we look at this right here, the first um, uh, line of text in this file is vanilla, and that's what we're, that's what we're displaying. So what if we want to do uh, option 2 here, where we want to see 31 flavors? Let's go ahead and run this again. So run file, enter selection 2, and enter the file name. So 059-31-flavors-flavors.txt. 
Text.txt. And this time I displayed all of these flavors to the user through the command prompt. So what I did was I grabbed information from this file right here and then I displayed it to the user. Let's go ahead and let's do the last one. So enter 3 to see 31 numbers. I'm going to type 3. So it's uh, 0, 059 31 uh, numbers.txt. And this time we just uh, we're displaying all the numbers. So the question is, how am I displaying this stuff? How am I grabbing everything and how am I displaying everything to the user? Well, let's go ahead and let's look at our code, see how we're doing that. So if int choice equals one, then I'm going to do the following. I'm going to grab the information from, uh, I'm going to grab the file name from the user, and that's going to go into str file name. And then I've got these two statements right here. I'm going to create a file object called file, and I'm going to open up connection to whatever str file name. And of course, right here, we're assuming that a person typed, you know, 05931 flavors.txt. Uh, and then I have a scanner um, object that I am then using to, uh, to access this file object. So now I've got access to this file through this uh, file object. And I'm going to use my scanner object uh, to use the method next line. And this will return whatever you know, string of text is on that line. And as you can remember, it's vanilla. So vanilla will be returned to str line. And then um, uh, since str, li str line has uh, the, very, uh, the uh, string of text vanilla in it, whenever I print this, it's going to say um, vanilla and then I close the file. So let's say I do option two, which is to, uh, you know, to display all of the flavors within that file. Um, I would just basically do the same thing. I grab the file name from the user. I create a, a file object called file uh, that accesses uh, you know, that file. And then I create a scanner object called input file that accesses the file object. And then I'm going to use a while looped. And what I'm doing is I'm more or less just cycling through this entire um, this entire file. So what happens is I'm using this has next method, the uh, input file, uh, since it's a scanner object, it has access to the has next method. Has next will say, hey, is there a you know line of uh, text underneath um, the line that I'm currently on? And if there is, for example, right here, if there is, there is, uh, there's a line of text under vanilla. Um, has next will return a value of true. So this right here will, will uh, have an expression of true, and this loop will then happen. So what I'm doing right here is I'm grabbing, um, I'm using input file dot next line. I'm grabbing the line of uh, the uh, this line of text. So vanilla, I'm putting it into str line, and I'm displaying that to the user. That's what's happening right here. And then um, after I do that, it'll uh, proceed on to the next line. So um, we'll come back up here. And we'll say, hey, you know, is there another line that the has next method says, is there a line after, uh, you know, chocolate? Yes, there is. So let's do the following stuff in here. And it'll iterate until we get down to the bottom. And uh, there, of course, is not, a, uh, you know, another line. And this will return a value of false and we'll exit out of the loop. And that will be the end. And then we'll close the file. So that's how we did this for 31 flavors. For 31 numbers, it was the same thing. Let me go ahead and open up that file and close this. And where did it go? Where did it go? There we go. So uh, go through the same steps, create a file object, and then uh, you know give um, this scanner object access to that file object right here. So I say, hey, while you know input file has next, so while there is another line in this file, do the following. So I use input file, um, use this object that has access to the next double. Uh, method which grabs which can grab a number and I'm putting that into DBL number and then I'm displaying that number to the user. Um, we cycle through all of this stuff till the very end where at the end of course this is not true there's not an, another line and uh, this value will be false and then we exit out of the loop and we close the file. So today uh, we just pretty much learned how to read input from a file. We use the uh, file class, we use the scanner class and uh, now you can read input from a file. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.